Hello travelers and welcome to Adventures in Security. In this video, we take a deep dive into what it takes to manage privileged accounts, those accounts used to manage our information and resources. Managing them also requires continuous monitoring of their behavior during use. This video is based on an article I wrote for Spiceworks. You can access it and many more helpful articles at the link above and also at, available at the end of the video. There are many instances of privileged accounts across a network, so it might be better to start with what a PA is not. A PA, or privileged account, is not a day-to-day -day account, one intended for the completion of daily tasks. For example, no business or IT user should use a PA to work on office documents or to check email. In contrast, a privileged account has elevated privileges, rights, and permissions that enable its user to manage subject access or perform other application device configurations. To clarify, a subject is a person or process that attempts to access a resource. The resources accessed are objects. In this example, Alice is accessing the financial or application in her role as an accounts payable clerk using her day-to-day -day account. Authorization settings limit her access to only entering invoices and new vendor information. Mary has a day-to-day -day account, but she has logged into the application with a privileged account, an account that can enter users into roles with data owner approved access. Although Mary is the account's payable manager, she is prohibited by policy from using the privileged account for her everyday management tasks, like approving vendor payments. Now let's look at some examples of PAs. A superuser account is typically a device account with full access to the configuration of an operating system. An example is the Linux root account. The network, network administrator account can manage network routers, switches, firewalls, and other network appliances. The domain administrator accounts manage all domain accounts, such as those used by users, other administrators, other devices, and servers. Essentially, it is a super user account for a domain, like the domains created with Active Directory. The local administrator account can have the same privileges as a super user account, but it can also be limited to performing only specific tasks. Service application accounts log into other services and applications to perform programmatically defined tasks, either requested by a command line command an application, or a user. Application accounts can act like service accounts, but are commonly seen as a way to access databases. Both of these account types typically access both on-premise and cloud resources. In today's environments, permission assignment is often distributed. Distributed administration of business applications enables data owners to manage roles directly and quickly make needed changes using privileged business user accounts. Further, some organizations do not enforce need to know, least privilege and separation of duties for high level management, essentially making these management accounts privileged accounts that provide broad access to classified data. When an incident occurs, quick access is needed to isolate resources, shut down systems or other tasks that might be separated across multiple accounts. During an incident, there's not enough time to log into various accounts, so energy emergency accounts with unfettered access across most, if not all, resources might be needed. This type of an account is an emergency account, and policy should, be, should prohibit its use unless approved by an incident recovery manager during an actual incident. Today's organizations have IoT and IIoT devices that often require vendor access for support or management. Accounts provided to vendors should be restricted to only what is needed to perform expected, agreed upon tasks. This list of privileged account types is not complete. It's a quick look at what might be on an organization's network. The thing to remember is that a privileged account is usually any account with privileges elevated above what is absolutely needed to perform tasks associated with daily business operations. Whether or not an account is treated as privileged generally depends on the risk associated with its use.
There are pitfalls or snares that many organizations encounter when managing PAs. Not every organization has all of these, but it's crucial to periodically examine your processes to see if one or two exist in your environment. The first is expanding privileged access. Expanding privileged access is another name for privilege or for permissions creep at a higher level. Permissions creep occurs when rights and permissions are given to a user that exceed those provided by his assigned roles, rights and permissions that are not adequately managed over time. Let's look at two examples. Least privilege and separation of duties can play havoc with an administrator's day as she tries to perform multiple tasks, tasks separated between numerous privileged accounts. This can result in her being granted additional access to reduce her frustration, going so far as to enable admin access on her day-to-day -day account. Privileged access, access expansion is also caused by poor management of temporary access. Projects often require additional access for one or two accounts to successfully reach a milestone. This is common and not a problem unless the access is not immediately removed after it is no longer needed. Privileged permissions creep is managed by following a strict procedure for access approval, assigning a termination of access date, logging the access changes, and alerting when the termination date is reached. In addition, periodic reviews of privileged account access are needed in case something falls out of the process. Of course, we know that never happens. Permissions creep is also caused by role mismanagement, the failure to manage role permissions and change user roles properly. Data owners, IT managers, and security manage privileged role access. They approve what a role can access and what it can do once access is granted, enforcing granular assignment of system and network management tasks. Each privileged role must be reviewed periodically, quarterly to annually, to ensure roles still meet risk management requirements. If procedures for managing role movement and assignment are not meticulously followed, additional access can be missed, enabling unknown and unwanted access to administrative tasks. Orphaned accounts are user, service, or application accounts that exist in directory services and are still active. In organizations with solid termination practices, this should never happen, with accounts disabled within 24 hours after the employee leaves the building for the last time. To be clear, terminated applies to employees who leave the company for any reason, not just for cause. RBOC and ABOC solutions can use sources of truth, like feeds from HR system, to automatically disable all accounts associated with a terminated employee. Whether manually disabled or automatically addressed, periodic checking, and I recommend daily, of a sample of terminated employees from the previous day to ensure the processes are working correctly. We also ran a script against Active Directory monthly, looking for any accounts that had not been used for more than 30 days and that had not been marked as leave of absence. I used an RBOC system that did a good job, but manual checks caught misses from time to time, especially when automation could not disable all accounts that relied on the help desk to disable. When we found an orphan account, we conducted a root cause analysis and fixed the gap in our processes. Service accounts exist throughout organizations, and they come with default configurations, including default passwords. These passwords are available from the vendor site or the dark web, making them glaring opportunities for threat actors. Change and risk management procedures should always check and remediate default configurations. However, IoT and IIoT integrations can drop through the proverbial cracks, enabling the placement of open default portals into your most sensitive network segments. Strictly defined, Static accounts have passwords that never change. While passwords used by humans tend to change every not 30 to 90 days, service and application accounts usually never change. And even if you change your privileged user accounts regularly, there is always a period of weeks between changes, time enough for a threat actor to get good use of stolen credentials 
or for a terminated employee to cause havoc across your business resources. Users with privileged accounts are busy people, often overworked and pressured to achieve business objectives within constricted timelines. Credential sharing is also sometimes mandated by a manager who is also under pressure to show project progress. These conditions can cause the sharing of privileged account credentials, achieving business goals, but spreading elevated access to individuals who should not have them and who are not recorded as having them. Gartner Research recommends two primary goals for privileged account management. Least privilege with limited scope accounts and implementation of zero standing privileges and granting just in time access. Account scope addresses what a PA can see and do, limiting the time that access is available. Organizations should manage the scope for each PA based on risk, enforcing least privilege to restrict an account to a specific set of tasks. Where possible, Organizations should limit each PA to a limited set of rights and permissions that are clearly defined by policy, designed to enable a specific system or network management capability based on risk. Neither the broad nor the limited access PAs are standing accounts, accounts that are always active with a password that occasionally changes. Instead, admins have to check out a PA when needed. When access to a PA is granted, the PASM solution sets a time to live, as specified in the business policies configured for it. The PASM system's control of the accounts is known as credential vaulting. Assigning a time to live to PAs and enabling them only when needed is called just-in-time access. Just-in-time access helps eliminate orphaned accounts, reduces password sharing risk, mitigates the impact of threat actor compromise of privileged credentials, and helps prevent rogue admin activities post-termination. We can never be sure that the person who checked out an account is actually the person using it. Nor can we count on a trusted admin always acting in ways we expect and allow. Privilege Session Management, or PSM, enables real-time monitoring of privileged account access. From when a PA becomes active to the point at which it reaches its time to live limit, a PASM or other solution should monitor all PA activity, alerting when behavior moves beyond established baselines. When an unwanted user or device behavior is detected, the monitoring system should alert security, require a reauthentication, or block further access. One example of session management is Beyond Trust's password safe with capabilities including capturing everything, including keystrokes and video of PA activities, watching for unwanted entry strings, and blocking specific commands or command line sequences. Building reports on PA usage for auditing, forensics, and regulatory compliance purposes, and ensuring a PA session complies with business policies that ensure regulatory compliance. Password Safe is just one example of a growing number of PSS, PASM solutions that are currently available. That's it for this video. If you have questions, please ask. And if this information was helpful, please subscribe. And until next time, be careful what you click.